practice of sound synthesis and synthesizers have been a disruptive force in the context of Western music and sound culture since their development in the early 20th century. Sound synthesis is a technique of generating sound using electronic hardware or software. The history of sound synthesis is thought to have begun when scientists around the globe began to experiment with electricity in the late 19th century. Through discoveries like the thermoelectron emission, in which electrons in a vacuum were observed flowing from a heated element, like an incandescent lamp filament, to a cooler metal plate. Scientists began exploring this phenomenon, coming to the conclusion you can control sound from a self-vibrating electromagnetic circuit and began exploring different methods to do so. The instruments that came out of this period of experimentation were met by a great hesitancy from the general public who had a fear that this technology could ruin music and possibly human culture. Science fiction authors began writing short stories about synthesizers overthrowing humanity, and an unnamed German musicologist went as far as saying that synthesizers reminded him of barking hellhounds, sounds that came from a world where there is no humans, only devilish beings. Despite this, instruments like the theremin, the Andio line, and the Hammond Company Novacord gained popularity, hinting at the sonic possibilities of synthesizers. In the 1960s, a new generation of engineers continued to push these ideas further, inspired by shifting cultural paradigms and the further developments of voltage control technology. They began to explore new sonic territories. On opposite coasts, two new schools of synthesis were forming. These new schools would later be known as East Coast Synthesis Style and West Coast Synthesis Style. The East Coast Style revolves around the idea of subtractive synthesis, a synthesis technique oriented around a filter that removes specific frequencies to get the desired result. This was exemplified by the developments of early Moog synthesizers. The West Coast Style revolves around the idea of additive synthesis, a sound synthesis technique that creates timbre by adding sine waves together each partial being a sine wave of a different frequency and amplitude that swells and decays over time due to modulation from an ADSR envelope or low frequency oscillator. This was exemplified by early synthesizers designed by Donald Buchla. It is worth noting that both of these schools arrived independently at the idea of a voltage controlled modular synthesizer, an instrument that would be assembled from various modules that control one another's voltages to generate and shape sounds. In this context, voltages could control pitch, volume, attack, timbre, speed, and other parameters interacting in complex ways. Robert Moog's interest in electronics began in childhood. He built his first theremin in 1949 at the age of 15. Moog then went on to open a theremin and amplifier shop with his family. It was here he began to experiment with voltage-controlled oscillators and amplifiers. Over the years, Moog further developed this technology, surrounded by experimental musicians like Herb Douche, Wendy Carlos, and Sun Ra. This informed his approach as he counted on them for insights into the sort of technology needed by musicians in traditional music spaces. Moog considered numerous trigger methods before landing on the piano keyboard. He believed the keyboard worked better for promotional materials, better encapsulating the link between the music and the machine. However, in Berkeley, California, Don Buchla, an experimental musician as well as a synthesizer designer, wanted to dissolve the boundaries between what was considered a machine and a musical instrument. Buchla rejected the use of a conventional keyboard. For Buchla, it was restrictive to use an old technology associated with wires and hammers with this new electronic source for sound. He wanted to build what he saw as an intentional electronic musical instrument. Buchla went on to say, that the tying of the keyboard with the synthesizer was a disaster for the creative composer who doesn't want to do 12-tone melodic compositions, someone who doesn't want to imitate violins and saxophones and so on and so forth, someone who wants to explore new kinds of dynamics and networks within sounds. Gukla spent much of his youth in his native California, eventually studying physics, physiology, and music at UC Berkeley. His early experiments with sound followed music concrete principles of tape splicing. In 1963, he was approached by Morton Sabotnik and Ramon Sinder, founders of the influential San Francisco Tape Center, to build an instrument made up of separate components or modules. These modules 
could individually alter the characteristics of sounds generated by the oscillators. The revolutionary element of this first Buchla 100 series was a 16-stage sequencer, which represented the first opportunity to control the movement of electronic music without recording tones to tape and splicing them to achieve the desired rhythmic effect. It is also important to note the environments in which Moog and Buchla developed their synthesizers. Moog in New York, surrounded by gig musicians in a hustle and bustle culture of New York City. In contrast, Buchla operated in Berkeley, surrounded by the burgeoning introspective counterculture movement. As a result, Moog seemed more preoccupied with utility, while Buchla remained more interested in experimentation. The modules of Moog synthesizers had straightforward names out of electrical engineering handbooks. Oscillators to generate tones, filters to modify them. Buchla instruments, on the other hand, had modules with more colorful names, like the multiple arbitrary function generator, quad dynamics manager, random voltage noise generator, and my personal favorite, the source of uncertainty. Despite these differences, there are also many similarities between these two schools. Both are dealing with generating sound from original sources while modifying them through various forms of envelopes and filters while utilizing voltage control technology. This has led to the contemporary synthesis renaissance we are currently experiencing. Whether it is through analog modular units like Zero Coast, which utilize both East and West synthesis techniques, or through the further developments of granular synthesis, which combine elements of sample-based synthesis and subtractive synthesis. Humanity is just beginning to explore the true depths of sound synthesis.